Hey guys, welcome back. It is Sarah. And Whitney. And you know it's the Preview Alliance podcast. Whoop whoop. So we're going to touch on a term today. <laughs> that resonates in your soul. I just, we'll explain more what text message I just got, but we will um, say default parenting. Yep. Whitney, what is a default parent? A default parent is the parent who automatically without anything being said 90% of the time is the one to take off of work when your child gets sick and to stay with them while they are sick. They are the ones that daycare or school calls when said child is sick. They are the ones that make all of the doctor, dentist appointments and anything else. They are 90% of the time the advocate for Mm. said child Mm -hmm. having to figure things out and navigate things should you need extra resources shall we say Mm -hmm. and we are the ones who more often than not get up in the middle of the night when the child starts crying yes in the in the problem solvers oh absolutely and we are the ones where all the questions get directed to the kids even though another parent may be right there runs to Mm -hmm. i'm hungry i need a snack Mm -hmm. where's this mom Mm -hmm. i mean we could be in the shower and those tiny hands find us using the restroom yeah there is no such thing as privacy no no it's all piling. It's gone. i will say this i had a kidney stone a couple of weeks back i don't God know love if, you. i don't know if you've ever passed one or of our list i have had. not um but it does not sound pleasant so i would probably take a c-section again over a kidney stone over this last kidney oh, stone good. um that's bad so i thought i had like a uti uh-huh. and i was like something's going wrong yeah Then it quickly escalated. Of course. And so I was um, passing it and Mm -hmm. I was, you bleed quite a bit, you know, the urine's blood. Blood. And so how this happened was we were trying to go to a, one of Bill's work events. Uh Because why would it happen on a day we like had no plans? Well, because that's just not what life does. We life. If 22 has taught us anything, life is not going to work with us. No against us absolutely so i'm trying to get us ready and i'm like oh gosh i I keep going back to the bathroom and i'm starting to have a lot of pain at this point and the boys decide to just you know join me well of course join mom what's going on she keeps going to the bathroom this is exciting right (laughs) and so i'm literally just like leaned over in so much pain and will's like he looks inside the toilet he goes you're bleeding. I'm like, mommy has, a, I think, a kidney stone. I'm okay. Yeah. And he goes, are you going to die? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to die. Yeah, I'm okay. it's okay. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, go see what dad's doing for a minute. Yeah. Ple- go check in with dad. Go check dad. No. Wants to be, like, literally, okay. mm-hmm. this is epitome of, like, default. Like, I am leaned over, passing a kidney stone mm-hmm. with both my boys. Actively bleeding. On my, like, they're they're crawling around me. They're trying to of roll course. toilet paper. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because why not? Because why new, not? It's a new playroom. So we end up having to go to a hospital. And um, on the way into the hospital, Will decides to tell everyone that mom is bleeding from her penis. <laughs> We Strangers. Can, we can laugh he now told a, that he, it's yeah, passed. He told a neighbor as we were like driving by. Okay, cool. Because he was like, hey, I'm on the way back to so-and-so. I'm like, sure. You know, mom's yeah. fine right at this yeah. point. You know, mm-hmm. it's just, I mean, excruciating pain. Let's let's wave to a neighbor, Will. And he was like, you know, we're going to the hospital. Mommy's leaning out of her penis, you know. And I'm just like, okay, this cool. is life. Yeah, but just cool. that moment, I was like, this is what default parenting oh, to yeah. me hit so hard. Oh, yeah. Is that. Still, I mean, we didn't have babysitters or anything. Our no. family's not close. So, yeah. like, we have to take them when we go in for this. I couldn't yes. drive. No. So, Bill had to drive. Mm-hmm. You also had to help buckle them into their car seats, didn't you? Oh, pack the snacks. Stop it, Sarah. Get an iPad ready. Make sure they peed. Because I was on the potty so much myself that yeah. I'm like, oh, y'all haven't peed this. You know, pee, fresh diaper, you know. Yeah, all the things. All the things. Do you think they want Bill to carry them or hold their hand as they're walking in to the hospital? No, no. they want me. Of course. So they're looking at me like, what's wrong with you? You look fine. I'm like, I'm a mom. And you're like, no, I feel like death warmed over, but cool. Let's but my, do this. But this. So that just was like my and, epitome. And of course, baby James is like, no, you're going to tote me on your hip, not dad. Oh, baby James is like, this is my prime moment to need you. Of course. So he's, he's Velcro the, baby. He 
he's my wild one. But mm-hmm. it's them second sh- kids. They get you. He, he gets me. I knew it from the womb. But, you know, even to the point of like the default hits hard where it's like groceries. Oh, we're out of milk. I got to get the milk. Will has a class party next week. Yeah, I literally I need to order the, the only, cupcakes. Yeah, I'm literally the only one that puts things in the Walmart app for our grocery pickup. Same. And I took stock for school parties this upcoming week. Yes. Teacher gifts. Teacher gifts. Or even the fact that... Or all the Christmas gifts. Or everybody that they could say it to someone else says it to the mom. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, yeah. perfect example. I We're recording right now. Um, I have one of my wonderful babysitters uh-huh. at the house. Um, Bill's working from home today, but mm-hmm. he did the handoff. But she's still texting me about questions when he is home. Let's not go to the next and room I, and ask those you questions. Know, and, I, and it's just the summary of default. Oh, yeah. I, so it's The like, epitome. It doesn't matter. I feel like sometimes it doesn't matter what's going on in our own personal lives. Mm-hmm. as a, Like a person, not even more. Yeah. Just like Sarah and Whitney. Mm-hmm. We still are going to be responsible for everything. Oh, and that's a lot. Always. I have seen my children walk past their father. He was in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. To come to me. Yeah. Doing something in a different part of the house. Mm-hmm. That's needed for the family. It's not like I'm doing my nails uh, yes. in the bathroom, you know, yeah. or put, having a little spa day. Well, I mean. And say that's luxury. We're not allowed to have that. No, mommy, I need some goldfish. I'm like, you walked past your father. (laughs) He was in the kitchen where the goldfish are located Mm -hmm. to drag, you know, and it's just like, so what do we do? Um, Honestly, that's a very good question. Because even then, very similar situations where my kids will walk past their dad and come to me and be like, I want a snack. I want to color. I want this. I want that. And I'm like, but but he's right there. And he'll even say before I say something, he goes, I'm right here. God love Bill. He said the same thing. He's like, dude, why do you, God, why ask me? And he's like, I want mommy. Mm -hmm. I want mommy to do it. Mm -hmm. Apparently I can magically, you know, grab the prepackaged goldfish. Mm Mm-hmm. A certain way that just they need. Mm-hmm. It hits different. The mommy mm-hmm. hits different. The mommy it magic. It does. So it's hard because I never, I don't think you might ever said that to me when I was pregnant. No, no one really prepped me for it. And, and I, didn't, I didn't, you know, I, I, I guess I was more resentful in postpartum of the default in postpartum. Oh, yeah. It's so glaringly in our face because we've gone through labor and delivery and pregnancy uh-huh. If you're breastfeeding, you're doing that. But even though I was a formula feeding mom, number one, I do actually have to focus on my breast health of drying up my supply and making sure I don't get mastitis. But also because I'm on maternity leave, who's making bottles every two to three hours? Whitney. Me. Sister friend over here is getting it all organized, pre-measuring the water in the bottles, having my formula right there. Or at least in the newborn stage, you know, you get the little tiny ones. And you're ready to roll. I'm here for those. Yeah. I'm here for that because it did save my sanity quite a bit. In You're the, the one stage. who was making sure you had your diapers ready. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your wipes. Who has those on auto subscribe on Amazon? Me. Uh huh. Always. And it's one of those, I do wonder sometimes, like, do the other partners actually get all that we do all the time? I House, don't, household I don't think so. management is like a willow tree and it has all these branches coming down always. Yeah. Always. There's more and more and more. A oh, thousand constant. branches. And that's household management. That's not even including our work and our managing ourselves. Or our social life. That doesn't exist. That you know, it's like, oh I'm so sorry. I, I read the text sometimes and I'm like, I don't respond for a long time and I feel bad. Yeah. But then I'm just like like I said, things just blow up. It's life. And you know I that's a conversation that I just don't think is talked about. That it's hard. That it's hard. It's a burden. And I don't want it to seem like our children are the burden no. because they are not being the default parent is the burden. And it's not being a mom that's the burden. Mm. It's the things that are put on us to mm-hmm. balance while we're being a mom. Oh, yeah. Well, again, and I've shared some in other episodes of just how hard the past few months have been in our life. So my grandfather had passed away and we went to his funeral, which was on a Saturday. 
we got home that afternoon and my five year old popped a fever. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it was low grade. It was like 99.8. So I'm like, and she had kind of the fluey looking eyes. And I was like, oh, dang it. Now you got the flu. So, you know, we get some Motrin on board and she had a snot nose. Like she's yeah. not having any respiratory yeah. distress. But still, that like puts your anxiety alarms up. Well, yeah. It's kid, one of those. I'm like, okay, I'm and keeping you're figuring an eye it out. out. Well, the next day, her fever goes up to 102 with Motrin on board. I'm like, okay, now we got to go to urgent care. Yeah. Now we, we probably need to get your lungs listened to, get yeah. you swabbed. What are we dealing with? Blah, blah, blah. All the things. So with that, I knew she couldn't go to school the next day because she yeah. had a 102 fever. Yeah. And she didn't need to go to school, you yeah. know? So who called out of work? Yeah. I did. And again, she continued to run a fever that Monday. So who again is calling out of work for Tuesday, but then also Tuesday she woke up again running a 101 fever and then had bloody snot. And I'm like, okay, now we have a sinus infection. Yeah. So who took off work Monday and Tuesday? I did. Mm -hmm. And so finally Wednesday she got better, goes back to school. That afternoon my two-year-old pops a fever at daycare, of course, because why why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? And it again, it was low grade. It was like 100.2. So not high. Not and then she's coming home. Well, then I take her to urgent care thinking, well, if we get a swab and roll out viral and it's just an ear infection, maybe I don't have to take the next day off of work. Yeah. Well, guess what? She popped positive for strep. Mm. So yet again, who's taking off of work? Me. While you're also responsible for your work. Yeah, you're responsible. Yeah, it was a dumpster fire trying to work from home with sure my two your year old. Home has a it's a life necessity. I'm talking about toilet paper. I'm talking oh, yeah. about food. Oh yeah, and disinfecting so that yeah. hopefully it doesn't all my spread. five year old doesn't get strep because that's not what made her sick. She had adenovirus. So we we have a whole and then other me and Michael never got you know thankfully we never got sick but we hadn't had strep since we were kids. So I'm thinking. Oh, it's so going to get us because I was very prone to that as a child. I ended up getting my tonsils out from strep when I was a kid. Yeah. I, mean, I missed so much of first grade mm-hmm. that we had to. But Yeah. So again, who was that default to continue taking off of work? Yeah. It was on me. And at that time, I, my mom is a great help to us. Let right. me just throw that out there. She was also sick with the same adenovirus that my older daughter had. So I had no backup. No. And I know some people might be thinking, well, what about your husband's family? Well, here's that caveat. His stepdad was in hospice care, so his mom couldn't leave. And let's be real. I mean, some people are very fortunate that they have both sides of the yeah. partner and, you know, your yeah. families, and they can jump in. And mm-hmm. a lot of us don't. But that, And that's the thing, too, is, you know, in this really challenging time of our lives, we did not have a safety net. No. I was that safety net. Now, I'm grateful to work where I work. Because if I still worked at the hospital, I probably would have gotten fired for having to take a week and a half off of work due to death and sickness. Yeah. Let's just keep it real. And I get that. Like, they have a business to run. They need employees. Here I am. Life happens. It does. And it was just, it was like a full moon just decided to move into Mm -hmm. our house at that time. And then, you know, we, I say we, my household had a week of you know, not being sick. My mom, on the other hand, was admitted to the hospital for sepsis from a brown recluse bite. So there's that added stress. But at least I'm back to work and my kids are healthy and well. But then you are, we're at this stage of these with motherhood mm-hmm. where like we're navigating like our parents yeah. and the grandparents and mm-hmm. their illnesses and, you know, them getting mm-hmm. older. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We why are at that stage of life. Why we are parenting young children Mm -hmm. and working and and having to try to balance like you mentioned household necessities all of that still fell on me and so I think it's like and it does start in the newborn stage actually no you know what it starts the moment you get pregnant let's back Uh, up yeah because you're carrying them that baby it's your your body that's changing it's your hormones yeah our hormones are changing we're having to be very mindful of what we eat and drink so you're limited because as soon as you get pregnant you're carrying that child absolutely your life's not just yours no and i get that our kids and i can only say this up until age five because that's all the mom experience i have but I do think because of the bond that we have with our children during pregnancy, that that is why infancy, toddlerhood, early childhood 
they are defaulting to us because we have a bond with them that dad isn't going to have. And that's not a slam or a personal attack. It's fact. Yeah. Because they were not attached to their dad by an umbilical cord for nine months. And it's just the comfort of mom. So it we, is. So I, I, I mean, I'll be real. And I've said this before. I'm told most of this. It's just in the middle of the night wake ups. Oh, yeah. I still handle that with my two-year-old. You know, and it just, I get irritated and mm-hmm. resentful. I'm like, why is it me? And it's yeah. like in that moment, it's because it's like a, a basic necessity is being taken away from me. Sleep, right? Mm-hmm. So like, yes, that's a trigger for me. Yep. Um, but sometimes it's just like, why is it all on me? Mm-hmm. Why is it all on mom? And yep. Like, Always. I don't think in the part of it is it's like I don't I give him some credit because it's like I know with his job, he's gone a lot. Yeah. And it's, I can't expect him to do X, Y and Z sometimes. But I will say that I just took care of it for so long when we were just us mm-hmm. that when he I didn't even realize picture. how big kids are going to rock our world. Right. I it's talked no about, but I don't know that we really get it until we're in the thick of it. I had no idea. Mm-mm. That easy, let's run by work when you don't have a kid to pick up something. Yes. Goes away mm-hmm. when you now have kids in the car and you have to unload them, go into the grocery store, get this, and you're just like. Yeah, what used to be, what, a three-minute stop to go run into the store and grab milk is now a 15-minute adventure. Adventure. Journey, if you will. That. You just pray it's Publix and then give your kid a free cookie when you swing by the bakery. Oh, my kids don't know about that yet because otherwise there would be tantrums and demanding. And uh-huh. so I'm, I'm keeping that in my back pocket till I yeah. need it. Well, that's a, that's a mm-hmm. swing by. They're, they're great little bakery workers there. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, I'm sure. But again, they see you and if like, my kids know, then anytime we go to Publix, it's uh-huh. like, I want my cookie. Mm, I'm, I'm saving that. And why is going to the grocery store alone now as a mom like a pleasure and a break? Oh, we can actually, I mean, <laughs> we talk about sensory overload. It's a slightly reduced sensory yeah. overload. We can think a little more clearly. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I'm not going to even lie. We do Walmart pickup because it is oh, just a game I changer. I, and that's why I say, do not I feel love bad it. for doing pickup. Or no. do not feel bad for doing delivery. Or don't feel no. bad for auto do subscription from do. Amazon. Resources, mamas. These are resources for us. This Use is, them. Why not? So we know I, I, we're not alone with this default. So what is there are things we could do to change it? Well, first thing I would ask is, are you willing to delegate anything? Ooh, you're calling me out. Same over here. Okay same so again when it was that chaos of my grandfather dying my kids are sick blah 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 blah, all those kinds of things I mean I think this was finally that Thursday when my two-year-old had strep and I was out of work with her I finally just texted my husband I said you figure out supper Mm. I can't do it I'm done Mm. I'm tapped out it is a dumpster fire here I can't work from home with her you I need something to be taken from me and that's what it needs to be healthy communication you did there because I probably would have just called, picked a fight, went well, wild. Well, I'm not saying that I felt great when I like, did. This is what I'm doing. I mean, that my tone of voice luckily did not transpire through the text message, but I was like, I'm done. And I got done. Work. I've had a yeah. week of trauma and loss and grief and I'm done emotionally. Yeah. Done. And knowing that and it's a learned process, but like yeah. I'm trying to learn I usually get done and then it's like done. Yeah. I'm trying to catch myself early mm-hmm. on and be yeah. better about communicating. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to handle mm-hmm. this. Yeah. You need to. Mm-hmm. And then I have to let go of mm-hmm. my expectations of yeah. how that's done. Oh, once yeah. Once I've asked for help. Well, like I've said before, sometimes we got to do things easy. You know what my husband did for supper that night? Take Pizza. Up. Hey. And it worked. Yeah. My kids were fed. Admittedly, my two-year-old didn't want it because she had strep. But we had chicken noodle soup. He honestly just emptied that Campbell's into a bowl, popped in the microwave, boom. Got you some soup, sis. Soup and popsicles. So delegate, communicate. Yes. Delegate what you are comfortable delegating. Now, is it going to be him doing our activity schedules? No. Probably not. No. But is it the Because the- he does work for a school system. So it's a little bit harder for him to get coverage for that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. So yes, I am still the default on that. But honestly, probably what I should have done with all the Christmas parties is said, 
can you go to the store and just get cups and plates? Because that's what we signed up for for kindergarten. And that's a mom's right. You get the cups and plates. Oh, yes. And napkins. Because I can buy that ahead of time. Yeah. And, and you're just done. Honestly, I can just leave it in the car. Yeah. I don't have to worry about forgetting it at home. I just leave it in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. What else? I mean, I feel like. So I would also say this is where we need to utilize our grounding thoughts because when we are the default parent, we tend to get overwhelmed. Yes. And angry. And, yes. And angry. And so this is one of those use those deep breathing skills and benefit of the doubt here. I know this is not the case for all of our mamas, but remind yourself, use those grounding thoughts of, okay, my partner is not trying to avoid being the default parent. Now, I know that there are some partners out there that do. And what is, there was a term I saw on Instagram. I follow her account. She's a, she's a, I think it's the comment, um, learned incompetence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, learned incompetence. Um, sometimes that is the case. And that's basically, mm-hmm. if I play dumb, yeah, she'll do it. Mm-hmm. Because there, it's almost a way of enabling uh-huh. that behavior. Mm-hmm. Um. And or, sometimes you just have partners that are selfish. Yeah. Let's just call it for what it is. So to those mamas that have the selfish partner, if it is safe, as long as it's not an abusive yeah. scenario or situation, call them out on it. Yeah. Because like I said, I just had to tell my husband, I was like, I'm done. I need you to help. I need your help. Yeah. Now, again, my husband is not narcissistic. He's not abusive. No. I don't believe that he was trying to avoid being the default parent. But it was one of those, I was like, I'm done. This is what I need you to do. Because he's an Enneagram 9. So he's the peacekeeper. Phil's an 8. I don't know much about the 8s. Um, but 8s and 1s can oh, they can forces. Clash? They can yes. be forces. Which is a nice little note we're going to mention. We're going to have a like an Instagram guru on oh, podcast. Oh, that's going to be so much year. fun. And we'll dive into all this. Oh, heck but, yeah. Um, but so he's not trying. And no, I don't think My either. husband is just so laid back and reserved and introverted. And you do such a great job of doing it. That's the thing, too, is I hate to say it like this. We excel at juggling all the things. Even though we feel internally, I'm failing, this is yeah. hard, mm-hmm. I'm resentful. We still do the thing. I heard something on a podcast a couple of months ago. said, if you ever want to get something done, give it to someone who's busy. Because they will get it done. Yes. And guess what? We will get it done. And part of that is high expectations, Mm -hmm. whether it's externally imposed on us or self-imposed on us. But then that's where we struggle to delegate. Yeah. So again, what can you delegate? Can you say, you're doing supper tonight, you're cleaning I'm getting groceries delivered. I'm doing a pickup. I, or mm-hmm. I'm going to get a housekeeper. If we have mm-hmm. X amount of extra money uh-huh. a month, this yeah. is something that I want. That can be doable. Yes. And so, you know, figure out what can be delegated. Where can you utilize your resources? Where can you utilize that support system? But if you're in the thick of it and you're drowning and you don't have that support, even if you try to delegate, Remind yourself, not everything has to be done in that moment. Right. You have to let some things go. You have to let some things go, prioritize, and break it down. If you have a work deadline, but you have a sick kid at home, are they old enough to where you can pop on some bubble guppies and say, watch this for an hour while I get this done? If it's like my two-year-old, it did not matter Mm -mm. what snacks I put in front of her and however many episodes of Bubble Guppies was on TV, she was going to be right there with me while I'm doing my session. Yeah. And it was a dumpster fire. I'm going to be completely transparent. It did not go well. Yeah. At all for us. You have to lower those expectations sometimes. You do. And so if it's one of those, maybe it's not like a telehealth meeting like I had with a client, but it's one of those you're working on a presentation or a document or something like that. Again, even if you're in the same room as said child and you can work while they're distracted by something, do that. Yeah. Absolutely do that. And I voice journal sometimes when I feel like I've had a really default day. Mm -hmm. Because... Decompressing. Get it out. If I get it out, then when I can approach Bill, Mm -hmm. I've already got that like initial... You've taken the edge out of um, the anger and the frustration kind of taking a little bit of the emotion out of it Mm -hmm. 
And I think sometimes we talked about past generations. Mm-hmm. Moms were really just expected to do it all. But can we also say that and they didn't have a things voice. have changed significantly. Women's rights have progressed yeah. significantly, but also the economy was significantly different where you could have a single income household. And now both parents usually have to contribute. And it's still a struggle to it's, make ends meet uh-huh. for many households mm-hmm. because inflation has gotten so bad yeah. over the past six months or so. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was this bad even in the beginning of 22. I, I feel don't. like it's gotten significantly worse since probably summertime is my roll of the dice on that. I mean, there's so much as I feel like that this generation of moms were mm-hmm. fighting from COVID to oh, economy yes. to the sicknesses that's falling after COVID. Yes, because this our RSV system, flu season has been a whopper. The working, you know, I read something that's like, you're supposed to work like you're not a mom, but mom, like you don't work. Yeah. That whole our kids are busier than they've ever been. I know when yes. I was four, I did not have Will's activity schedule. Oh, can I just say that we have electively chosen not to do extras with my kids right now because we can't juggle that, it all. And that's a good thing to say. That's a personal boundary. And we know okay. where we're at. And also, I wanted to give my daughter a chance to get adjusted to kindergarten yeah. before we signed up for extras. It's too much. It is. And so that was one of those she doesn't right now doesn't really know what's out there to be involved in. And I know it changes as they get older. It does. But if you are in this stage of life, you don't got to do all the activities. If you, you are don't. already feeling like mm-hmm. I'm defaulted out. Yeah. So it's, you know, and when we're talking to our partner, mm-hmm. you know, we said this earlier, they sometimes don't even really know what we all do. Oh, 110%. How do you tell them what you do? One of my <laughs> friends, she has this wonderful, um, she'll say, yep, the mommy magic fairy came through yeah. and stocked the fridge, did mm-hmm. this, packed the lunches, got the laundry yep. done. The kid magically had the homework assignment done. Her yes. work got this done. Her parents' presents got done. Yep. Mommy magic fairy flew past. I need one of those. And are they for hire? You are. Oh, no. It's you. Mm. And she was like, that's what they think happens. Yeah. That we just wave a magic wand and yeah. it's done. So how do you say that without being like, how holding up a list? I was about to being say. being like, this is what I do. So I'm not a great person to ask about this because I'm very competitive. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm the- very competitive. And in my head, I'm like, if I wrote down all the things that I do and manage. Yeah. My husband, being the Enneagram 9 that he is and being laid back, he's actually going to view that as like an attack. Oh, Bill or will a 100% think that so I'm coming for him. That I'm just going to say I don't think that's a great thing to write all the things down and say, this is what I do. That's not going to go well. No. So Tears we- will be shed. Voices will be raised. Uh-huh. I'm going to say that's not a great option. No. Um, but y'all know your own family dynamics, so... You do you, but hear my word of caution that that probably won't go well for people. I've I've done something similar in the past. Uh-huh. With not exactly a default parent, but yeah. with a let me show you. Yeah, all the things. And that didn't, I guess. It did not go try? well. Let's just learn from our Yeah, I, w- I would um, there. advise to not do that. So what can you do to feel like you're being seen or help you without so, that whole you ain't doing X, Y, and Z. I am. Uh huh. So one thing that I really would encourage is to figure out if words of affirmation is your love language. I love to hear I'm doing a good job. Well, we're Enneagram ones. Of course we do. We need that external validation so our inner critic can be quiet. Oh, yeah. I Thank mean, you. legit. Thank you. Let's look at this. Or that kid. It's a personality that thing. inner child. Mm-hmm. We need that external validation. Maybe we didn't get that growing up and now we're seeking it by doing all the things. Oh, I know. Ooh, we went deep there for oh, a second. Oh. Um, so telling your partner, hey, I don't expect you to do all the things that I do, but can you just tell me that you see it and you appreciate it and that you're willing to help where you can? Yeah. And that was, mm-hmm. that helped. Mm-hmm. Now, is there still going to be days where I'm just like, do you see what Oh, I've yes. Done? Yes. Well, we're human. We're going to get overwhelmed. We're going to get that sensory overload. We're going to get tapped out. And so we're going to get frustrated. Yeah. Because, again, one of those kind of side effects of the feelings of overwhelmed 
is frustration and anger. Mm. And in those times, don't go to social media because that comparison trap will get you again. And again, even looking, you don't even go to social media. You don't have to. I know sometimes even in carpool line, I'm like, I see so and so here picking up all the time. Like I see a dad. I'm like, how does that dad get yeah. off? Every how does that day? work? How does that work? Or I, I will say, I see it at the parks. I'm like, how does that work? Yeah. But I don't know what he doesn't do. Exactly. Now, that being said, because my husband does work for the school system, and now that my daughter is in kindergarten, they had Thanksgiving week break off together. So, because my two-year-old is a terrible two, yeah. calling it for what it is, she still went to daycare. Yeah. But you know what? My husband took my five-year-old to the parks every single day. Yeah. And it was great. And, and I didn't need, ask him. And they need that time. Yeah. And I didn't ask him to do that. Yeah. He could have opted for them just to stay inside the house and do TV all day, but he didn't. He took her to the park. So that was one of those. I was like, I really appreciate you getting her outside and doing fun things with her and, you know, going to grab lunch and just different things like that. It was super yeah. nice and helpful. And those words of affirmation when we were all home together over the weekend, he was like, well, why don't we go to the park again? I'm like, yes. Because it worked. Because it worked. And so then as a family of four, we all went and we could, you know, man-on-man defense with the kids. But you have to have man-on-man. Yeah. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's two parents to one with the two-year-old. Baby dang. Mm-hmm. I'm like, where are you at? Um, Toddlerhood. It's and a I trip. Think that's one thing that sometimes default, I felt sometimes, it's like because I am default, I am doing all the things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think, even my parents get to do the super fun things with my kids that I want to be the fun mom. I want to do the yeah. fun things, but I'm like, yeah, but like, well, I have to run our life. Mm -hmm. So that's, but that's me yeah. having to say, you know what, what can I drop? What mm -hmm. can I not? I deserve to be the fun moment yes. too. Oh, absolutely. But I think default, you feel like mm -hmm. I can't sometimes because I have all the things yeah. or you're beat down and tired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So giving yourself that. Give yourself some grace on that. Yeah. That we can't do all the things all the time. No. It's not humanly possible. And if it's one of those, you have the opportunity to go be the fun parent and go to the park, go to the zoo, go do a craft with them, whatever it is, and not wipe down the countertops or not vacuum or whatever is on your list. Realize, okay, yeah, that still needs to be done. But I can bump it down the list and go be the fun parent I want to be. And no one is judging you but yourself hard enough. Agreed. Wholeheartedly. So I think, and that's something that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody is. We don't oh, realize yeah. until we're moms. Oh my goodness, yes. But li so, listeners. So much. Now you know what a default parent is. Yeah. You know how to work through it. Mm-hmm going to say this is magically going to change your life and you'll never be the default parent again but at least hopefully this episode yeah. will make you know you're not alone that's right and yeah. it's a term mm -hmm. and it ain't just you yep you can relate to it now all right guys till next right. time see y'all